Herman Chinura Hesse is a classic entrepreneur. He's been called by some the Bill Gates of Africa. He's working on software and technology solutions to connect local entrepreneurs directly with customers and markets throughout the world. His business, like many others in the region, is creating jobs and putting Ghana on the road to prosperity. It's how Hong Kong, the Asian Tigers, and Ireland developed, and Hesse wants to see his native country do the same. I studied manufacturing in Texas State University, and I moved back to Ghana, and uh, I intended to go into manufacturing and figured that I didn't have any money. I was sitting around and realized, hey, wait a minute, my little computer I had here was a, a factory. It could make software, and I'd been dabbling about with software, and I thought, hey, I could turn this into my manufacturing business. So I partnered up with an old, old uh, schoolmate, and uh, we started writing software and uh, started selling door to door. In the early days, you know, hand to mouth, we bought a second computer and we employed one person. We, we were programming out of my bedroom, sitting on my bed. And then we evolved from there and grew and grew and grew over the years, and became very large. He's met with great success by developing what he calls tropically tolerant software, programs that run well in places with frequent power outages. But the story he tells is like that of many entrepreneurs in the developing world. Sometimes international foreign aid has been an obstacle to growing his business. There are situations where I've set up a business deal, I'm about to do a trade. I'm going to sell something to a community, I've made an investment, and NGOs will hear about it uh, because it becomes topical, and they find a way to bring aid money and provide it for free. So what happens to my investment? I have to lay off my staff. To a large extent, our governments have been held captive by the donor agencies, the international donor community, who are not, in my view, particularly interested in seeing the growth of uh, local business. When we talk to the government, the government says, hey, we're not allowed to buy with donor money local products. That's just the way it is. It's their money, they decide who gets it. And this has been a big dilemma for us. Politicians, they are more interested in a smile on the World Bank country director's uh, face than the success of my business. For example, five of us companies in Ghana got together, local companies, to bid for a contract, a government contract. Now, everything was going very well. We were competent to do the work. Guess what happens? We're bidding against some European companies. One of the companies got their government to loan our government money, very soft loan, for the project. Our folks in the government said, hey, you know, we love you very much. There's not, nothing beats free money. We lost our money. You know what we ended up doing? We ended up working, working as subcontractors to the Europeans. They gave us the worst part of the business, the most difficult and least profitable part. We wound up doing it because we were, we were better at, at doing the work. So they got the best of both worlds. Their government paid. We ended up doing the work. They took the money. That's not development. That's not assistance. That's thuggery. A large part of aid is, of course, a subsidy to the companies that do the work in African countries. I myself worked on such a project, and I saw myself the incredible waste. It was a road project, actually, in Tanzania. And the foreign aid, so-called, amounted to a huge subsidy for a company that could not possibly have got the contract in a, in a real market.